Antonio Guterres warns of a winter of discontent over the invasion of Ukraine, inflation and inequality at the opening of the UN's General Assembly in New York. A much-awaited speech by Vladimir Putin got postponed as Russian-appointed officials announced referenda in an attempt to join parts of occupied Ukraine to Russia. Antonio Guterres has warned of a winter of discontent over the invasion of Ukraine, inflation and inequality. The UN Secretary General opened the 77th United Nations General Assembly with a speech telling world leaders that the clock's ticking and soon there might not be more time left. We need action across the board. Let's have no illusions. We are in rough seas. A winter of global discontent is on the horizon. A cost of living crisis is raging, trust is crumbling, inequalities are exploding, and our planet is burning. People are hurting, with the most vulnerable suffering the most. The UN chief also pointed out that the fossil fuel industry is profiting from the current situation, despite the role it plays in the climate crisis. Hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies and windfall profits, while households' budgets shrink and our planet burns. Excellencies, let's tell it like it is. Our world is addicted to fossil fuels, and it's time for an intervention. We need to hold fossil fuel companies and their enablers to account. And that includes the banks, private equity, asset managers, and other financial institutions that continue to invest and then the right carbon pollution. The Russian invasion of Ukraine will top the event's agenda. Ukrainian President Zelensky is scheduled to speak this Wednesday despite Russia's opposition. Still waiting. The much-awaited speech Vladimir Putin was scheduled to give this Tuesday was postponed without official explanation, but it might take place this Wednesday. Some analysts were expecting the Russian president to give full support to referenda announced by Russian-appointed officials in the Luhansk, Kherson, Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions, so that Moscow can justify mobilizing its military reserves. The vote has been slammed by Ukraine's government as well as its allies. French President Macron says the Kremlin is trying to force the West to recognize Moscow's territorial gains. Russia must now understand that it cannot impose any will by military means. Even cynically coupled with sham referenda in bombed and now occupied territories. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz also insisted that the results of Friday's vote won't be recognized. Russia must withdraw its troops. Ukraine has every right to defend the integrity and sovereignty of its own country and its own democracy. We support Ukraine in this, and that's why it's also very, very clear that this sham referenda cannot be accepted, that they are not covered by international law or supported by the international community. This is attempted imperialist aggression. On social media, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also condemned the initiative and accused Putin of trying to escalate tensions. We are just days away from Italy's general election, and this year there are heightened warnings about possible election misinformation, particularly when it comes to postal votes. This video recently appeared on Italian Facebook. In it, a man claims that he received his voting papers from a local Italian consulate in Switzerland. Now, he falsely claims that, on his ballot paper, some parties have been deliberately removed, namely parties like Vita and Italexit, Eurosceptic or populist parties that are known for spreading debunked conspiracy theories. However, their absence from the ballot paper is not evidence of election fraud. If you go onto Italy's Consulate General website, you can see that these parties have not been included on some ballot papers because they didn't receive enough signatures to run candidates for overseas voters. And this wasn't just confirmed by the Consulate General, it was also confirmed by one of the parties themselves in a post on Facebook earlier this month. Now, the man in that video also claims that the Italian elections will be rigged because, in his ballot paper, he claims he received this, an advertising leaflet from the centre-left Democratic Party. Now, it is true that these kind of leaflets should not be included in the envelopes that are sent to overseas voters. 
However, in the video, you can see that the man has already opened his envelope before he starts filming. This therefore compromises the reliability of what he is saying. We also know that the spokesperson for the Democratic Party has said that these claims are completely unfounded and that the video has been manipulated. Here at Euronews, we've also contacted Italy's election commission for a statement on these claims. But in any case, this is not evidence of widespread voter fraud. There is no evidence that any other overseas voters in Italy have received a leaflet from one particular party. These kinds of false claims about voter fraud have previously appeared at elections in Europe in the past few years. And as we approach Italy's election on Sunday, it is likely that more false claims like this will also appear in the coming days. Italy's Matteo Salvini is taking a softer approach on his usual hardline opposition to NATO and Brussels ahead of the country's parliamentary elections. The right-wing alliance composed of Maloney's Brothers of Italy, Berlusconi's Forza Italia and Salvini's La Liga party are hoping that the electorate might forget the far-right's criticism of the EU's policies to date and its iron ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin as the coalition pushes for an election victory. Speaking at a conference of political leaders at the end of August, Salvini suggested Ukraine's allies should reconsider the embargoes placed on Moscow. This comes as La Liga voted against the European Parliament's motion last week, declaring Hungary can no longer be considered a full democracy. The former Interior Minister launched his election campaign from Lampedusa and focused on immigration. He pledged to move screening centres for people seeking asylum to northern Africa. Rivals of the far-right La Liga leader say Salvini, who has publicly expressed his admiration of Russia's president several times in the past, is opposed to Western sanctions because he wants to do Putin a favour. A former communist and member of the Northern League since 1990, his political career began at Milan City Council. He then became a highly contested figure at the rise and end of Mario Conte's first government and focused on what La Liga identifies as Italy's macro problems – immigration, crime, high taxes and economic development post-pandemic. The next chapter of the Alliance's programme with Forza Italia and the Brothers of Italy addresses institutional reforms and justice. The campaign suffered a blow after a U.S. intelligence report found Moscow had given over 300 million euros to foreign parties and politicians in more than 20 countries since 2014. Maloney and Salvini have denied that their parties took money and has slammed the report as fake news. Moving forward, La Liga's first commitment is the direct election of the President of the Republic. On the tax side, the party wants to introduce a lower flat tax. If the polls are confirmed, the right will return to power and Salvini could resume the role of Minister of the Interior. In the past two years, the Covid pandemic has taken a toll on the fight against cancer in Europe. That's why the European Commission has rolled out a new initiative to strengthen cancer prevention, detection and diagnosis. The recommendation to the Member States is to increase the number of screenings covering more target groups and cancer types and there is urgency. In 2020, more than half of cancer deaths in the EU were caused by breast, cervical, colorectal, lung, prostate and gastric cancers. The new initiative aims to increase the target of offering cancer screenings to 90% of the EU population qualifying for breast, cervical and colorectal cancer by 2025. The EU Health Commissioner. Ultimately, what we're all trying to do here is change the realities of cancer within the EU. And screening programs are fundamental to that because early diagnosis does save lives. And we are all working together with this. And these are recommendations put together based on the latest scientific evidence. For patient groups, better screening and detection plans are long overdue as there are important gaps between countries. This is a very important achievement because uh, mainly for lung cancer, there have been uh, uh, for a long time uh, uh, a lot of barriers. All countries have a tremendous big delay for, for uh, screening. In addition, the Commission plan aims to extend targeted screening to other cancers, notably prostate, lung and gastric cancer. Hurricane Fiona is blasting the Turks and Caicos Islands as a Category 3 storm 
after devastating Puerto Rico. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says the storm's eye passed close to the British territory's capital island. The premier of Turks and Caicos urged people to evacuate. The storm is likely to strengthen into a Category 4 hurricane as it approaches Bermuda on Friday.